I'm Racers Marshall Pruitt. Going to dive into a new video series here talking about IndyCar going hybrid in 2024. Meeting up here with our friend Jay Fry, IndyCar president, Mark Stilo, Chevrolet's director of competition motorsports engineering, and David Salters, Honda Performance Development's president. This new super capacitor based motor generator unit hybridized system coming to the cars. About 100 plus horsepower is going to be available starting in 2024. So we're meeting up here, breaking into a bunch of different topics, learning some cool and interesting things here at Texas Motor Speedway. Probably get together next at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and do more of these throughout the year as we get ready for hybridization coming to IndyCar in 2024. So Jay, one of the cool things that's been going on behind the scenes, right? We're here round two of the 2023 NTT IndyCar series and great, but there's testing going in the background, getting hybrid components either validated, putting them under those, those arduous conditions, just came out of a test recently at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, understood that it rained and there was all kinds of things. Tell folks about some of that process that's going on in the background, getting us sped up towards 2024. Yeah, well, I, we've been testing basically as soon as we can, right? So anytime something's ready to go, we go test. So they did a test, I guess it was two weeks ago at IMS. It was wet, you know, which is kind of unique, so that was good. Um, about 1,400 miles were ran between the two of them, which is cool. So, yeah, it's, it, the testing program is going to ramp up as the summer goes on. There will be more and more teams involved. You know, we'll get quantity and mass that we can test more. So, um, yeah, it's coming. There's going to be a lot of testing. David, for you, tell me about the testing side as well. I'm sure you'd love to do everything all at once, but incremental tends to be something that happens when you're developing a new technology. So whether it's cooling and trying different forms of cooling or vibrational tests. Give folks an idea of some of the things you're trying to work through to improve this package. The hybrid system had got to a certain point and then there was a the discussion, okay, let's help make sure that it can go racing, which is our, we know that, that's our secret source. Um, basically there was a redesign that happened that took 10 weeks over Christmas, start to finish, to sort of repackage the thing a bit, to make, it, um, make its life a bit easier. But then within that, we had to disrupt, de um, design anti-vibration mounts. So then we did calculations for that, so that the thing, it's, it's basically all bolted to an engine that's trying to zizz around at 12,000 RPM, so it's not a nice place. And think about the heat as so, yeah. well. Yeah, so heat, yeah. it sits right between the yeah. engine and transmission, yeah, exactly. so you have these big glowing hot pieces of metal. Exactly. Where better to put a super capacitor <laughs> perfect and place for it. perfect place it's, well that's the raceable part we talked about right it's yeah. safe because yeah. it's got this fortress of solitude it can live in <clears throat> but, but we had to so we took it to a shaker rig that shook it to death that because you you want to keep the time here it's expensive to go and do this stuff so we took it to a shaker rig we validated our calculations it then went to the dynos our dynos and then it made its way to the track test so there's a whole set of steps that you need to do that are due diligence for engineering to simulate it, check the simulation, vibrate it. You ideally want to make the life harder than it is here. Mm -hmm. So you can do that on a shaker rig, then you put it on the test cells and then you bring it to the track. So that's sort of the process that we continuously go around really is sort of analytical simulation design, test in conditions that you can control and then put it on the track and then repeat. Jay, another area too that I know has been very important to IndyCar and your manufacturers is no matter how much work you put in, this is going to have some weight to it. It's going to mm. add it towards the rear of the car, which is not something most folks would ask for. But there's been a major effort Mass. to reduce every gram possible. Can you talk about that a bit? And Mark would also love yeah. to get some of your thoughts about that because performance is important here. And I know that this, I don't know if I want to say downsizing, but how compact, how light, that's been a big effort too. Huge. So I think if you look at the evolution of the whole thing, so we started off, I think it was like 160 pounds, right? The first time we tested, it was in the 120 pound range. And then recently it's more, more like in the 60 pound range. So it's, and we're not done. They're not done. They're Could doing a great job. Diet formula? Yeah. I need right, that. exactly. <laughs> yeah. so in a Can year, you help me lose yeah. 100 pounds, Jay? Yeah. Right. Please. So in a year it's lost 100 pounds. So magnificent job. Um, there's still more work to be done, but it's definitely going the right direction. And Mark, from your end, knowing that you have the skills within your group and the many folks there to look at every area and try and pair a little piece of weight here and there, 
What has that been like from your end as well, knowing that you're in charge of the mechanical part with the metal? Yeah, I mean, all, all, in, all good engineers, we're trying to optimize the solution. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, math, the lab, the track. So everybody's like really grinding on the analyticals. And we're, we're, we've moved past that phase. Now we're getting the first proof of concept parts. Mm -hmm. We've taken some of the early other similar items to, to prove out the control strategy and stuff like that, both on the Honda and the Chevy side. We've, had, we've been on track running kind of the Gen 1 version of this. Mm -hmm. Now we're moving towards Gen 2 to have parts on dyno very soon. And uh, it's been a constant grinding and a, uh, making it better and better every time we can take optimize something. We've been on both sides, on the Honda side and the Chevy side, looking at every little opportunity to optimize the mass and the efficiency of the system.